I imagine our next guest uh, is not surprised by this outcome. He's one of the few on the left who has had the wisdom to observe the failings of the so-called progressive um, political movement to engage uh, with people. We are joined um, by a friend of the platform, Chris Trotter. Chris, how are you, mate? I'm very well, thanks, Sean. So I, I, I would have loved to be a fly on the wall of your living room um, on Wednesday night as the results uh, rolled in, but I imagine you were not sort of having a heart attack It's in surprise. Nope. Nope. Not at all. Um, I'm quietly patting myself on the back um, mm. for writing after the failed assassination attempt in Butler, uh, Pennsylvania. The opening line of the post was, well, he's unstoppable now. Yeah, you did uh, too. And, yeah. And, and um, there were moments when I thought, well, maybe Harris will do it. Um, she had a great convention. But that was such a confected event, um, and you really had to hand it to them. The stage management was, to use one of the Democratic Party's favourite words at the moment, flawless. Yeah. Um, but afterwards, you know, when she did those one-on-one -on -one interviews, you could see that there was... There was no real core um, to Kamala Harris, or if there was, she was hiding it. Um, and that never works, as poor old David Shearer discovered in his brief period as leader of the Labour Party. When your instincts tell you to take one position, but your party tells you to take another, the result is, is never very effective. Mm. But Trump is always Trump, and Trump ran his usual um, eccentric campaign, but this time, this time he got buy-in on a massive scale. This time he won the popular vote. And the interesting metric, um, Sean, is that Trump won more votes in 2020 than any Republican candidate had ever won. Mm. and not all the votes have been counted yet, but he held his vote. Um, he got 74 million, I think, in 2020, uh, and at the latest count, he's sitting at around 72 million. Uh, Biden got over 80 million, and Kamala, somewhere in the 60 million range, she lost... 13 million votes um, between 2020 and 2024. And that explains yeah. <laughs> why Could, she Chris, lost. I wanted to ask you, uh, mainstream media is still trying to say this was a close election. It wasn't. It was a friggin' landslide. It was an earthquake. Oh, when you consider who the candidate was and how he campaigned mm -hmm. and some of the um, outrageous things that he said yeah. um, and that he won the popular vote um, by a margin of four or five percentage points. Mm. Well, um, yeah. yeah. Um, it, was, it wasn't even close. It mm. wasn't even close. I mean, once again, I mean, if you're looking at the metrics, um, they threw up a, 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 a screenshot um, on CNN showing where Trump had um, overperformed by a margin of more than 3% across mm. the United States. Yeah. And everywhere, um, there were little um, counties showing where he had got, you know, even yeah. more votes than he had in 2020. And then someone said, well, how's Kamala Harris doing? <laughs> and, and it was just crickets, Sean. Yeah. Just crickets. There wasn't a single county That's anywhere. Right. Can... Where did you watch it, um, Chris? What did you watch? Or were you channel oh, surfing? I... No, I didn't channel surf. I, I, I stuck on CNN because I'm a great fan of, of John King. Yeah, John King is war. bloody good. I'm going to give you that. He does his yeah. job without yeah. fear or favour. Yeah. I've met him a couple and of I, times many years ago, yeah. actually. Nice yeah. guy. Yeah, and I tell you what, in, in the weeks leading up 
um, he went and visited um, all of the swing states. I don't think he was at all surprised by what was happening on election night. I think he picked it himself. And I heard him, you know, I heard him describing um, uh, what, what your typical auto worker was going through, the auto worker and his family were going through, the things that they were deferring, um, the idea of making their, their, their American car make just a little bit longer by, you know, working closely with his mate, the mechanic. He understood what was going through the minds of working class Americans. And very few other people on CNN or MSNBC or the New York Times or the Washington Post had the faintest idea of what working class Americans. And this is the thing. Um, last night I watched Gutfeld. Now I hardly ever watch Fox News, but I watched Gutfeld last night. And do you know what struck me, Sean? There was a kind of joy in that group. You know, I'm sorry yeah. to borrow a word from Kamala, but <laughs> yeah. there was a kind of joy in that group. And I think the Republican Party was discovering for the first time the rich emotions of solidarity and multi-racial um, uh, common purpose, yeah. right? And I don't think they're used to that. But hey, you know what, Republicans, it is a good feeling, isn't it? Mm. It's not just the, the white boys in their Brooks Brothers suits and their wives at the country yeah. club. You're sitting there now with um, um, African Americans, with Latinos, um, with all sorts of folks, Asian Americans. I mean, Trump was making up ground in areas that the Democratic Party thought Along to, to them. them, yeah. Chris, if the American journalist didn't see this coming, apart from, from the odd exception like, like uh, John King at, at CNN and probably the people at Fox, um, what about the journalists we sent over there to report this? They had no frickin' idea, did they? <laughs> oh, I'm tempted to say in that treacly sort of voice, they did their best. One. Well, their best was <laughs> rubbish, wasn't it, Chris? <laughs> um, it, it would have been great if they'd done a Paddy Gower. I remember um, at the... I oh, uh, chasing the Galbraith, down some guy in Pennsylvania or well, something. Look, no, no, I'm, 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 I'm not sure where Paddy is at now. Yeah, oh, he's he selling came advertising, back from I think, a, and doing pub yeah. tours. Okay, yeah. but he came back from the United States in 2016, and I met him at Galbraith's Ale House. And he took me aside and he said, Trump's going to win this. And he described um, walking along the lines of people waiting to get into a Trump rally. Yeah. He felt it, you know, he yeah. got the vibe. Um, and he came back and he knew. Yeah. And much the same way I think that John King just knew. Yeah. That. Kamala was not going to carry this any more than Hillary was going mm. to carry 2016. And you've got to be open to the experiences of being with the voters. You've got to be open um, to the idea that as a journalist, you don't take sides and you report what you see in front of you, Chris. That's well, 101. Yeah. 